All right. Well, my phone says four o'clock um, and I'm going to try and be prompt. So uh, let's get this started. Thank you guys so much for taking the time today um, to chat with me a little bit about the importance of ongoing advocacy. Um, my name is Maggie Buneo. If you don't know me, I'm the grassroots director here at NAFA. Um, so that's why, you know, there's probably a small bald spot in my hair this week with all of these meetings going on. Um, for those of you that have been on webinars or meetings with me before, um, you will know that I pretty much think the worst thing is to listen to me just ramble on um, over time. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to either put them in the chat or the Q&A, um, and I'll try to get to them before the end of the session. So when we are talking about ongoing advocacy, um, I want you guys to sort of think, and, and I'm not going to call anybody out here, um, but how many of you really, you know, sort of get really excited for congressional conference, come to congressional conference, meet with their legislators, and then go home, and then next year get really excited for congressional conference, and that's about what they do um, in terms of advocacy for the year. Now, don't get me wrong, Congressional Conference is a lot of fun, um, particularly when we're in person. It's one of my favorite weeks of the entire year, um, but it doesn't really lend itself to um, building a strong and lasting relationship. Um, so what I would say, um, and a good way to think of it, is really advocacy is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. Um, and for those of you that are a little, I can, you know, a similar analogy for those of you that are a little nervous about advocating about building these relationships, the more you use it and, you know, the more you get used to working it, the less uncomfortable it becomes when you do use it. Um, so I think that's a pretty good analogy in, in two places. Um, when you're meeting, um, when you're building these relationships, and when I'm talking about these relationships, I am talking about relationships with both legislators and staff, because I think that the relationships, the staff relationships that you guys are able to build are so valuable. Um, you want to be able to, you know, meet them and talk to them several times a year, um, but not in a way that it really becomes onerous to you or your time. Um, it should be a fairly easy, simple process. And so I'd love to walk you guys through that. Um, and so after a fly-in meeting, like the one you're going to have tomorrow, um, there's some things that you can do to make yourself memorable to the staff that you met. Um, the first thing you can do is you can send a thank you to staff. Um, they really like to hear from you, especially, you know, to again, put a name um, and a face, you know, with an email and an organization they'll have their um, you know, in a different day and age, I'd say they'd have a file of facts, but they've got their Outlook, um, they've got their Outlook contacts and they'll put you in and, you know, categorize you in some sort of way that they understand that, okay, so this is the, you know, this is the financial advisor I met with yesterday. Perfect. Insurance issues, financial services issues. I will put, the, I'll put them in that bucket. I'm glad I have their contact information. Um, at that time, it's also really useful to resend the issue briefs. Um, now in this case, NAFA sent all of them ahead of time. Um, but that doesn't mean that they held on to them. So sometimes sending them again is great. They can again put your email in some place that is easily accessible should they need to find it. Um, this is a big one. If you promised an answer to a question or some sort of follow up, deliver. Um, it's crazy, and I don't remember the exact statistic, but um, Congressional Management Foundation I know did a did um, some research a couple years ago um, and asked Hill staff sort of what the most, I want to say annoying, but most difficult part of a Hill meeting is, you know, sort of developing that relationship. And they would say, you know, when somebody came in and said, oh, that's a great question, I will get back to you. Um, and then they don't, and then they ghost them. And that really doesn't sort of self to being a, uh, it doesn't lend yourself to being some sort of issue expert. Um, when you're like, oh yeah, no, let me get that answer to you. Um, and then you don't do anything. And sometimes here, that answer is not, um, that answer is not necessarily you having to go out and do the research. Sometimes that answer is as much as saying, hey, I actually, I don't know the answer to this, but our lobbyist Diane Boyle works on these issues. I'm putting her on this email and here's the question. And then Diane or Judy or Mike or Danny or Pat or anybody you've talked to um, would follow up with that based on their own expertise. Um, so the other thing you can do on top of this is try and schedule another meeting or call. 
Um, and in this point, and our congressional conference is timed really nicely for this. And if you're trying to have sort of regular calls, um, and we'll talk about this in a couple minutes, but members of Congress are generally home for um, all of August and some portion of July, some portion of September. If it's an election year, August happens, they might be in for like a couple weeks in September. Um, so putting something on the books, perhaps while they're home, um, or at least indicating that that's something you plan on doing um, is a really great thing to do. Um, and thank you. Someone just asked if our groups are big with the Senator and they get 50 notes of thanks with issue briefs, is that bordering on abuse? Um, that is not bordering on abuse. Um, they are used to those sorts of things. Um, their emails are public domain. So you can imagine even when larger groups um, than us have some sort of campaign, um, they, they can get inundated and they can get inundated fast. Um, but as long as it's positive and you're not screaming expletives at them, um, you should be fine. Um, and to that end, actually right after this meeting, um, what we've done is we've made it easy for you guys because there are you know, sort of 50 notes. Um, we have created in our Advocacy Action Center, which is nafa.org backslash advocate. It's also connected to our meet, the meeting um, portal that we've been using for all of this. Um, we have under our take action section, we have a note specifically for when you just met with your senators. Um, it basically says thank you for meeting and it outlines our priorities. Um, and then we have another note for the House because unfortunately, while we're not able to meet with the House, this week, um, we normally do. Um, so again, sort of letting them know that we miss them, most of them, <laughs> outlining their priorities, um, and then saying, you know, we would love to try and schedule some time to meet with you this summer. So teeing that up. Um, and these will go directly through their constituent mail. Um, so it's not going to a direct staffer, it's going to their mailbox, which makes it a little less onerous. Um, as some was saying, you know, 50 emails of thanks. Um, but they will get an idea as to you know, who NAFA is um, and have your contact information. As you're building these relationships, one of the things that I think is really important when you're talking about sort of year long and continuing advocacy is you wanna do more than ask for things. Um, legislators and their staff are constantly being asked for support, co-sponsor, being opposed to certain things. If you take the time to say thank you, either privately or publicly, they love it. And it is really a great way to build a relationship. So privately, again, sending emails to their legislator or their staff is a really easy way to do that. Um, for example, if someone introduced a bill that would be really helpful to our industry, just send them, a, you know, and you are their, you're their constituent, just send them a quick note and say, hi, I'm a constituent. Um, or again, if you can, if you have maybe the card from the last person you met with, on their staff, send it straight to the staff instead of through their portal, but say thank you. Um, publicly, um, social media is a great way to say thanks publicly. Um, I try not to have people wade into the um, sort of the minutia of social media if they have something negative to say, because sometimes it can be a pretty scary place. Um, but if you do just want to say thank you and you want to you know, sort of send your support to a legislator, um, Twitter and Facebook are very public and a great way to do that. Um, another way to do that is to send a letter of ed to the editor of the local pay of your local paper. Um, and if this is something you're interested in doing on a particular issue, NAFA would be happy to help you do this. Um, also, again, in the more than ask category, offer yourself as a resource. Uh, if when you're talking to a legislator or their staff, just let them know, you know, I'm here. If you have any questions about, you know, this bill or retirement savings or, you know, how this particular, you know, how, again, how the PRO Act might affect um, you know, my industry. I'm happy to be an expert for you on that issue because I understand that you need to know a lot <laughs> uh, to be both a member of Congress and a staff person. Uh, if you've ever looked at sort of the portfolio of a legislative assistant, it goes everywhere from agriculture to foreign, so to, you know, to, to foreign issues, to military, to financial services, and that's all just one person. Um, so really having people that are a resource is a really great is a really great option. Um, and somebody also just asked, um, when are we gonna get the talking points for today? Um, can we have them in writing? Yes, so the talking points are actually available on the meeting portal. If you go to any of your meetings for tomorrow, they're actually right at the bottom. Um, they're also on the Advocacy Action Center if you wanna go there as well, which is again, napa.org backslash advocate. There you go. 
Um, another thing you want to do is meet outside of DC. Um, meeting with your legislator or their staff doesn't have to happen just in the context of a fly-in. They are home about half the year, sometimes more, particularly if it's an election year, and they have a full complement of staff in the district. Um, if you have built up a relationship with a staffer as opposed to the legislator, sometimes at this point, it's either a great time to have an entree to the legislator itself or to say, hey, I actually am looking to schedule a meeting in, in, at home. Who do you think the best person is that I should talk to? Um, and their relationship um, with the people in the district office, they'll point you to the right person. And so then you're not just building relationships with people in DC, but people at home and the legislator themselves. Um, but I really like district meetings because as they sort of mentioned on some of the panels earlier, they are longer, more casual, and they really lend themselves more towards, towards relationship building. When you're meeting with a legislator or their staff in district, they're not being rushed to a committee hearing. Things aren't being cut off because votes were changed. You're really going to get a nice chunk of time if you're able to get a meeting with a legislator to talk to them about their issues. And I, I, that's just great for relationship building. Additionally, if you're having these meetings and you are reaching out to staff, you do want to do it regularly. I would suggest about quarterly, um, four to six times a year, unless there is some sort of issue on the table that causes you to need to meet out to meet sooner. Um, we have had it happen before where, you know, we have everybody meet um, for their for their district meetings in August, then lo and behold, in September, there is an issue that drops that we need to then go back and talk to them about. That's just the nature of the game. Um, they won't think that you're overbearing. They've, they've done this before. They're used to it. Um, they know that when an issue comes up, you're going to reach out to them. And actually, they count on it because, again, they want you there to be the issue experts. Um, so when we're talking about reaching out, we aren't always necessarily talking about meetings because sometimes if the issues aren't changing or since the last time you've spoken, there really haven't been any movement on the bills that you've talked about before. Sometimes there are other ways that are good to build relationships, attending a town hall, a political fundraiser, even just shooting an email to the staffer and saying, hey, it seems that things on our end are, you know, are pretty much the same. Do you have any intel? Um, is there anything that you'd like to meet about? Is there anything that I can be of service that I can help you with? And they really appreciate that. It really does help the relationship building. Also, when we're talking about relationship building, um, as much as I said, it's really important to build relationship with staff, do be aware that legislators staff, particularly on the DC side, they really bop very frequently between jobs and offices um, until I used, to, I used to work on Capitol Hill um, when I first moved to DC. And it was so shocking to me coming from a place where, you know, both of my parents had had the same job for 30 plus years that having a year long job or like working someplace for 11 months was considered acceptable. Um, you know, all the, all the sort of career counselors that you hear people talk about will say, oh no, no, like you need to stay at a job for at least a year, two years. That is not the case on Capitol Hill. They move around a lot, that's considered acceptable. And so do not be surprised if the person that you meet with um, sort of in May is if you're coming back for something else, maybe not even the person you meet with this coming January and definitely not the person you meet with um, in the, the next May. That is more likely in the House than the Senate. Folks in the Senate tend to stay put a little more, um, and district staff tends to stay put a bit more. Those folks, um, you'll find if the legislator has been there for a long time, you'll find that district chiefs, constituent folks that are working with constituents may have been there since the start of the, of the rep or the senator's career. Um, and so that's really great to sort of see the difference. Um, but if, a led, if somebody does leave and you have a relationship, often they'll just shoot an email to everybody sort of in their, again, in their outlook and say, hey, thanks for let me, you know, thanks for working with you. Um, I'm, I'm headed here and this person's going to be picking up my issue portfolio. So here's their email and you can reach out to them and then again, begin to develop this relationship. Um, but also it's not a bad idea to keep in touch with these folks because they will pop up again in other offices. Sometimes they go to Senate offices, sometimes they go to another office in the state, um, and sometimes they go and run for other offices. Sometimes they'll go home and run for state office and then it's great that you knew them when. Um, I, you know, I always use the example, I used the example back when Paul Ryan was speaker. Um, he used to, if anybody's ever been here for the meetings, he used to be a, in LA and he actually he used to bartend over at the Mexican restaurant on the corner. Um, so, you know, it's crazy to, uh, it's crazy to think about where people were um, and where they could be. So keeping in touch is great. 
Additionally, um, another great way to reach out and support and develop a relationship is through campaigns. So if you do support your legislator that's in office, volunteering is a great way to build those relationships. Um, and, and I like to say too that when you're campaigning, campaigning is great because there's actually an activity for every taste. You told me that volunteering meant going and sitting on a phone and phone banking. Um, I'd rather put toothpicks through my eyeballs. I've done it before and I can't stand it. It would be a really hard way to get me to, you know, to work on a campaign. However, you want me to go hand out pamphlets at public events or door knock, I'm happy to do that. And so, and so finding something that you enjoy doing and supporting them is a great way to do that. Um, and a little caveat on that is that these activities will be more widely available on election years. So this year, this summer might be a little quieter because we won't have an election this fall. Um, but come next spring, things will be going gangbusters, hopefully, and particularly, um, you know, once COVID has sort of swept away and we're back out in public again. Um, so yeah, for, for representatives, every two years, they're up for election and your senators will be up every six years. So the next steps for you guys, if you have a relationship or are working to build one, go to NAFA's Advocacy Action Center. Again, I, you know, I'm a broken record here, but nafa.org backslash advocate um, and tell us about that relationship. Even if you don't have it and you're working to build it, we have a little note section. Just let us know that. Um, and one of the reasons that's really important to do is because if the legislator that you're building a relationship with has something that they, you know, that they do, again, they co-sponsor a bill, they introduce a piece of legislation that's really important to NAFA, you'll get an email from GR staff, most likely me, letting you know that those sorts of things have happened. So you have the opportunity to leverage their good, their good deed um, with, you know, another email or another touch that can help you build that relationship. Um, so that being said, I think um, I have gone through, does anybody, I'm looking at the question and answer um, panel. It doesn't look like there's any open questions, but if anybody has any, and I'm looking at the chat here to see if anybody any here, but if you have any questions, please ask me now. All right, you guys were chatty, but it doesn't look like you had any questions. Um, so, I thank you guys. I'm gonna give you guys another 10 minutes back, particularly if you're going to be attending the Ask the Experts panel um, it, at 4.30. Um, I do recommend that you guys do that. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm going to be moderating. Um, and Diane and Judy and Mike are all going to be sort of answering your questions at will. And I do have a question before I say bye. Um, does it make sense to, to know your staffer's portfolio includes from an issue standpoint? Um, so it doesn't, you don't necessarily need to know that the staffer you're talking to deals with financial services and agriculture, um, but it is important to know when you're looking at a port, like a, a portfolio of, you know, who works in the legislator's office, um, that which person works on financial services, which person works on retirement. Um, so you don't necessarily need to look and say, hey, you know, Joe, Joe Smith, um, you know, you work on these five issues. You just want to know that Joe Smith works on the issues that are important to you. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, we've got a couple questions here that aren't necessarily relevant to this presentation, but I'm going to answer them in the chat. Um, but let me double check. Um, the thank you template is actually going to be, again, nafa.org backslash advocate under take action. Um, we are going to have those available. They're available right now. I do recommend you wait until tomorrow because the template itself starts with thank you so much for taking the time today to meet with us. Um, so if you can wait for us, that would be great. Uh, you know, wait till tomorrow, wait till after you meet. Um, but the templates are there. They're going to go directly to your senators. Once you log in, you just need your email um, and you can add them. Um, you can add your personal stories or anecdotes or anything um, as you want them. So I am going to um, say goodbye. I'm not going to log out for the moment in case anybody comes up with any additional questions. And I'm going to answer a couple of you that had some questions that were related to the earlier session. Um, but hope to see you at 430. Um, and thank you guys so much for joining me. Bye. <laughs>